All right, so rather than me trying to draw all this, I've taken a figure from your textbook um, that that is what, again, this is called a Jablonski diagram. And the goal of this is to show where the energy from our photon, once it's been absorbed by our molecule, can go. And these different types of um, emission of light that we can see correspond to different types of spectroscopy that we can do. Uh, so on the bottom here, this is our ground state. Uh, and in the previous example we were looking at, this would be our S0 state, where we have our two electrons paired in the same energy level, uh, the N, for example, for our um, for formaldehyde. Now that light will be absorbed, and that's what represented by this A here. That's right, so this is absorption of light. Uh, and the, the molecule, will, the electron will go into an excited energy level. And the different lines here represent different vibrational energy levels. So when the molecule absorbs light, it also not only changes the electronic state, but also the vibrational levels. Now, the, that excess energy above the electronic state can be lost. Um, and here, this is R1 means relaxation. So some of this vibrational energy that's present will slowly you know, be lost to solvent or collisions with other things. So the energy that our molecule absorbs will first, some of that will be lost to relaxation, right? The molecule relaxes down to the ground state. And from here, there are several different paths that our molecule can take to get back down to the ground state, right? It's not gonna stay at an excited energy level forever. Um, it'll lose that energy and go back to the ground state. And this Jablonski diagram is a way to kind of show the different possible things that can happen. Uh, now, one of, the, one of these that can happen that leads to no light being emitted is what's called internal conversion. So if our molecule is able to convert from this S1 to an excited S0 state, um, then there can be a long, uh, what well, looks long on this diagram, but a relaxation of the molecule through all these different energy levels back down to the ground state with no photons emitted. Um, so this is just the energy is lost as heat. Right, so this turns into thermal motion that goes into the molecules in the solvent that are around this molecule that got excited. Uh, and so we get no emission. All right, so the reason we need to keep track of this is for some molecules, this is the dominant process. And when that light is absorbed, we don't see any light come out of the molecule. And so for those molecules, we can't use emission spectroscopy as a way to monitor them. Um, so, so this is something we need to be aware of that can happen. Uh, the second possibility is our molecule gets excited through the absorption process here, goes up to this level here, loses its energy in the first relaxation step, and then immediately emits a photon and goes back down, down to the ground state. And this is what's known as fluorescence. Uh, fluorescence happens on a very short time scale, so 10 to the minus 8th to 10 to the minus 4th seconds. So this can uh, often occur on sort of nanometer or tens of nanometer time scale. Um, it can be a little bit longer than that. This all depends on the specifics of the molecule you're looking at. All right, and this, this fluorescence, this is a very useful um, signal that we can look at for molecules to understand um, their concentrations. And we'll be looking at that in just a second. Okay, so that's another option is that we can get emission of light. And that's light that we can then observe and monitor and that allows us to do analytical measurements. Our third possibility is a system is what's called intersystem crossing. And this is, um, again, this, the specifics of all of this depend on the specific molecule you're looking at. For some molecules, fluorescence is the dominant process. For some molecules, it's internal conversion. And for others, it's this intersystem crossing. It just depends on the details of the energy levels and the properties of that molecule. But what intersystem crossing is, is it takes our S1 state and goes into the T1 state. So similar to internal conversion, but we are also flipping a spin. So we go instead to this where we this state where we have two spins that are aligned with each other. Right, just to remind you what T1 represents here. And again, we'll see relaxation down here. And there's again two possibilities here. We can this could also undergo intersystem crossing and we get no light out as if it goes back to the, you know, this intersystem crossing back to S0, which then goes to relaxation, right? So this is another poss possible pathway down this way. Or we can get light emitted um, that's known as phosphorescence. 
Um, the difference between phosphorescence and fluorescence, uh, one, one major difference is that phosphorescence occurs on a much longer time scale. Uh, the reason for this is because this intersystem crossing, as well as going from T1 down to S0, are both, both not very probable processes compared to fluorescence. Right? The flipping of the spin is technically forbidden, um, and so for that to happen, it, it doesn't happen every single time it could. Um, and so it takes much longer for this overall process to happen. So phosphorescence happens on a much slower time scale. So 10 to the minus fourth up to like hundreds of seconds for phosphorescence. Um, and often um, things that you're familiar with that are glow in the dark, um, those are those use phosphorescence to, right? You, you, um, you know, put light on them and then they slowly emit light afterwards. So anyway, uh, fluorescence and phosphorescence are both ways that we can monitor molecules um, and uh, use the emission of light after we excite them using some light source uh, to monitor their concentrations and do analytical chemistry. Uh, and so there's a lot going on in this diagram, um, but you know the main idea, main idea being here is there's multiple paths that the energy in our molecule can can be lost and our molecule can go back down to the ground state. Some of those produce light, fluorescence and phosphorescence. Some of them don't uh, through internal conversion or intersystem crossing. Um, back to the S0 state. Uh, and the specifics of this are going to be related to specific molecules.